Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Talk, Therapy, and Heal. This week, we have a great treat for you. As we continue on in our Family Ties series, I encourage you to listen in and glean the nuggets in which we'll share with you today. We look forward to connecting with you. Mm -hmm. So as Larisha was saying, we are continuing on with the Family Ties series this topic that we are going to be discussing this week is be the branch, not the tree. And what do we mean by be the branch and not the tree? Well, the tree represents the family, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to liken that into the family and the branch is the individual, which would be you um, and us collectively. Like we, we are the branches when it comes to trees in our families as well. Yes. So, hmm, be the branch, not the tree. So just kind of starting off, what comes to you all when you hear our topic, be the branch, not the tree, either from a professional standpoint, personal standpoint, what would you say? I think there's a, a lot of trees in the woods. Uh, okay. They all kind of look the same, but they all may have different branches and the branches may serve a particular purpose. And I think being the branch and not the tree kind of lets an individual be an individual and operate in their specific uh, purpose that God has potentially given them. Mm, okay. okay. Mm. Anyone else? So when I think about um, the many different trees, like you said, there are so many different trees and a lot of them look the same. If you ask me, I, it's a tree. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Tree. I don't know the difference really between a, a redwood tree, a dogwood tree, a cedar tree, whatever the tree. I love trees, mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell you the names of them. So they all sometimes look the same. But like you said, mm -hmm. I've never seen a tree that had the same type of branch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something I've never seen that. And some some of the times the, the leaves that it produces off of its branch are also different than the other leaves on the other um, branches mm -hmm. on the trees. So nothing looks the same, but it's something that how we, when we're in families, um, and we're tied to a family, we feel like we have to look exactly like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that tree, that, that tree that produced our family. Like, I got to look like my auntie or I got to look like my mama. I got to look like my grandma. I got to do what they did, how they did it, when they did it, all of the things. But if you think about it, we are all different. Right. We're all producing different things. And how your branch looks upon the family tree is not going to be the same as what your auntie's branch looks upon, the uh, how it looks on the tree. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're talking about here today is just coming from that individual standpoint of understanding and recognizing that it's okay to be different. Yes. It's okay to be who you are and not conform. Mm -hmm. to family and societal norms. Like, I don't have to make sure, oh my God, my, my auntie branch look like this. My branch is not curving like that. Let me make sure I curve like this. And that curve might not agree with you. Yes. It may not agree with what you're trying to produce, mm -hmm. but yet you're trying to make it that. And so I think it causes for confusion. Mm -hmm. It causes for identity crisis. Mm -hmm. um, it also causes trauma mm -hmm. um, within that tree. And then we, we wind up with sometimes branches that are not surviving, that branches that are, I don't want to call it toxic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or sometimes the family could be that toxic thing, that fam that that tree is toxic and we're trying not to be it, but we're connected to it. And so we feel like we got to be just like it, not really fully in, um, embracing the fact that we can be different. Right, right. And, you know, I set up and think about, um, so as we know, somewhere around the pandemic, after the pandemic, it was a spirit of cutoff. <laughs> Where everyone's like, I'm not dealing about this person. I'm not dealing with that person. Oh, I'm cutting them off. Everybody was hashtag cut off. <laughs> but the thing is, I think a lot of individuals are struggling with how, because we were all taught this, what we was talking about before we came on. Oh, we was in a good discussion. <laughs> so hopefully we can continue it. But we were speaking about like how we were taught family is everything. No matter what someone in the family did to you, they are family, blood is thicker than water, all these types of cliches. And where a lot of individuals I feel are struggling is it's either you conform to the norms of the family um, or you seen as a black sheep 
or oh, because you did the work, you went to counseling, you did the, you know, you went through your healing journey and all that. Oh, now you think that you're better when that's not the case. And so a lot of people I know, you know, from a relational aspect and especially breaking generational curses, this is a struggle that that many deal with. It's like, I love my family. I don't want to cut my family off, but at the same token, I cannot continue to operate in that same path that was not healthy for me. Or individuals, let's say it from the, the tree and the branch, I feel like I am dying as a branch mm. connected to this tree. And when I want to, because I know, let me say it like this, that God has more for me then to continue into this, I feel like I'm slowly dying. So do I just slowly die and fade away and not fulfill what God has for me, even though I'm feeling that God has greater for me or, and have my family be mad at me. And when we go to family functions, nobody's talking to me or my children. Come on now, because people are dealing with that right now. You know what I'm saying? So these are the things that I'm seeing from a relational aspect. And then also, I've been hearing, we've been hearing uh, recently, where is this, well, Rachel is doing good. You know what I'm saying? She's doing good in her life. And baby, I'm their mama, I'm playing their mama. You know, no shades to the mama. But, and baby, because you're doing good, uh, your sister over here, Larisha, God forbid, is not doing that good. So it's your responsibility, even though you got your family, to take care of yourself, but also take care of her. And that's a good example, I feel, of Rachel now carrying all this unnecessary weight mm -hmm. because Larisha had the same opportunities as Rachel. And she's carrying not only her family, because we know as women, no shade to the men, but we carry a lot. We're the glue. We're the glue. We're the glue that's holding our branch together on the tree, you know, <laughs> of a lot of our families. So, but then not only am I carrying the weight of my family and trying to be one with my husband and make sure we went, raise these children right, now I'm carrying the weight of my sister and her family. And because of that weight, that's more than I can bear because the word of God say he won't put more on us he than won't. we can bear. He won't. Come on, Rachel. Come on with the inner faith. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And healing. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm slowly dying. On oh, my branch of the tree, or oh, my branch is weighing down, about to touch the ground and break off. Mm -hmm. I love how you talked about the branch or cutting people off in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You talked about yeah. cutting and feeling as if you have to be connected to that tree uh, be so that you can survive and right. not feeling like I can survive on my own. And I wrote something down um, and it's uh, can a branch survive if it's or a branch can survive if it's cut the right way and planted and rooted in a healthy way, in a healthy soil, in a healthy ground. So you can be cut mm -hmm. or you can cut mm -hmm. In a way that you're not cutting yourself totally off from your family, but you're cutting yourself off in a way that you can grow healthily. So you can have your family over here and you are not receiving or, um, I guess, inundated, if you will, will, with all of the things that's going on in the family or in the tree. Um, right. as and you can have the same DNA from that tree that you, you cut from, but you be, you will be able to provide Produce, excuse me, produce a different fruit, mm -hmm. but it depends on the tree, mm -hmm. on the roots that the tree or the branch was cut from. Mm -hmm. So it depends on you. So you are connected to this tree. You want to cut yourself off to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to have the things in place to help you grow and mm -hmm. heal properly. So you got to deal with you. Right. You can't just say, I'm going to cut myself off and go over here and isolate. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't yes. cut yourself off and say, well, I'm going to just disassociate from them. They, ain't, they I, I'm just cutting everybody off. And ain't, everybody ain't done nothing to you. Just right. one person right. does right. something right. to you. Right. Right. But you're cutting everybody off, but you're not going over there and doing a separate work. Right. Right? Mm. You're cutting yourself off and then you go and have your branch and you go to die and you take your whole family with you that's connected mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's good. you are not cut, you're not planting yourself in a healthy environment. You go and replant yourself in something just as toxic as what you left mm -hmm. and think that you're gonna produce fruit that is going to go out and be successful. Right. It ain't gonna happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I have a question for y'all. Do, do you guys know if all branches create the same amount of fruit? 
<laughs> they don't. You will find some that will produce three or four oranges on one branch. Some may only produce two. And so for those individuals that feel as though everybody else has to be fruitful and multiply because somebody else did it, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So if God made trees that way, he made man in his own image. What makes you think that you're going to prosper just like somebody else? It all comes in something that we call a season. Mm -hmm. And so if that branch is not prepared to give that fruit, you can't expect to have it picked. Wow. And so right along with that, unnecessary weight breaks branches. Yeah. Unnecessary. Unnecessary uh, weight. Let me write that down. Because even when branches have fruit on them, sometimes you have to be prepared to pick that fruit to move away from it or else the branch breaks. And then that's what happens, what Nikki was just talking about. Whether it breaks because there's too much weight or you decide to break off itself, at that point you're not producing any fruit. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of families today, what they're looking for is they want the fruit so much, but they don't want to do the planting. Mm -hmm. And the same day you plant the plant, the seed is not the same day that you're going to get the fruit. Right. It has right, to right. grow. It has to be nurtured. It has to be nourished. It has to keep some things away like the bugs, the disease and things of that nature. And I ain't calling nobody a disease, but you know what they used to say, if the shoe fits. <laughs> Not, not trying to be messy, but sometimes even in our own family systems and the way a family system works, if one wheel is turning one way, it's going to make another wheel turn. Mm -hmm. If one of those wheels gets out of whack, it can mix up that whole system. Whole system. Yeah. And so the same way with the tree, who in your family is causing the branches not to be able to pick, uh, to get fruit? Not trying to call anybody out, but we have to figure that out so that the tree continues to produce. Right. So listen, yeah, I'm I'm here and I'm processing. This sounds like self development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This sounds like let me take inventory responsibility of my own self. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And take time to self develop, and it takes courage, right? Mm -hmm. I think about that scripture: you leave and you cleave, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to leave your old and mm -hmm. cleave to whatever is true, right? So mm -hmm. if you are individual, or even if you're married, we're gonna cleave to the kingdom, right? And now we're not gonna, you know, and we're gonna leave our family because kingdom trumps family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the word of God trumps. What we what we think is normal. Right. His mm -hmm. truth, you know, it supersedes our. Mm -hmm. His ways are not our ways. Right. His thoughts. thoughts are not our thoughts. Right. They're right. higher. Right. So it's if we're operating here and God is saying, I'm calling you here. Mm -hmm. I want you to do this. I need you to separate. Mm -hmm. Think about Abraham. He has to leave his whole family. Right. Yep. Trust God. And he go, he God says, when you get there, I'll tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? right? He had to leave the tree. Right. All that he known mm -hmm. to go be a branch, mm -hmm. to hear from the Lord, to get his identity, because mm -hmm. now he's no longer a right, a now Abraham. he's Abraham. Abraham. And now he's Abraham. That took time. That's mm -hmm. for him to leave mm -hmm. and cleave to the Lord. And then right. look with that branch because he went and did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Look what that branch just for Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. He planted himself in a whole other environment, a yes. healthier yeah. environment. That's environment. It. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. From the father of all. Yeah. Mm. 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 So that's Bless. the thing. A lot of people, um, and that's why we're bringing this up for you all. Like, okay, what did I just come in? Why are these councils talking about trees and branches? <laughs> um, so for the you all who are just coming in, you are the branch, the individual, your tree, the tree is your family. So think of family tree. And so a lot of individuals struggle with the leaving, mm -hmm. whether it be in marriage. How many of us, you know, joined the military, you had to leave your family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had to leave. It was by choice that you left. And this is ironic that we're speaking about this um, on this show I literally posted on our social media page, how did people feel about moving away from family? Mm -hmm. What was your thoughts about leaving your hometown and different things like that? And if we be honest, and some of us have seen it, that's no longer in our hometown. And not to say our hometown is bad, because you know, the hometown folks is mad right now. Um, but the thing is, some people will even get jealous because I see the growth in you. Mm -hmm. I see that you left. Even though we were probably more like Abram at that time before his name was changed, 
what do you mean? Where am I going? A lot of us didn't know where we were going, mm -hmm. but it's not until you get there and you grow, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? To where you see the fruit and everything where you can say, okay, this is what I was supposed to do. So for those who are struggling, mm -hmm. Because so many people said right now I could just pack up my whole park and my whole house and just leave. But they're scared of what their family is going to say. And a lot of times, if we can be honest, those who are living with regrets within your family is nine times out of ten the one that's stopping you from leaving. Mm -hmm. Weird. You may have some that'll say, I wish I would have did it. Do it. Don't think, don't give a second thought to it, do it. You know what I'm saying? And so give yourself permission if that's what needs to be done in a season, as he was talking about a season, mm -hmm. to do what you need to do. Yeah. It's not like you're just turning your back on your entire family. You still family. Right. You still look alike. You still family. You got the same DNA running through your veins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you never know where you are supposed to be planted. It may not be for me in Spencer, Choctaw, Oklahoma or whatever. No, I'm actually living in Texas now, but God took me all the way around the world to get here mm -hmm. and I'm growing, but no knock on my people who are still back home. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of struggle, that weight that we're talking about. People, a lot of people right now that I speak to are under that unnecessary weight. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they're dying inside. Mm -hmm. And you can look in a person's eyes and tell if, if there's still life or not. Mm -hmm. Life is too short. Right. Yeah. You know, like right. when, you, when you said that, I yeah, it's just too short for you to stay stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Breaking free mm -hmm. from patterns, the, sh the shackles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Breaking free from conforming or confirm, uh, confining patterns. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what happens when we are trying to stay connected to the family, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I want to be so close to my family. And, and it goes back to like the identity thing. I don't mm -hmm. know who I am apart from my family. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that it's okay to step out there into this new whole big world that I absolutely know nothing about that. Just thinking about it gives me anxiety. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it makes me stress. And, and you're saying to take and break away from, even though it's toxic, Mm -hmm. Even though it's not healthy for me, it's familiar to me. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me to break away from that familiar, yeah, familiarity mm -hmm. that you talked today <laughs> um, and go off and explore a world that I know absolutely nothing about. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, keeping it real, mm -hmm. uh, what if you can't get away? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What if you have to remain in that? Mm -hmm. unhealthy environment, that toxic environment. Wow. I think of the scripture that talks about the fallow ground. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? How can you break up? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That fallow ground in order for you to continue to be that branch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. Do you break up the fallow ground and break up the family? Because mm -hmm. the family is the tree. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, what do, you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you break up that, that ground? Wow. I, I think as a, as an individual, uh, if you realize that your family has some issues that it's not causing you to grow, not allowing you to produce fruit on your own, yeah. it's almost like we said in an earlier show, you've got to be able to do that work for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't save everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you start with yourself, then maybe somebody else sees the fact that, hey, this person kind of broke away. Not saying they're trying to run from anything, get away from the family, but they worked on themselves to produce a better fruit. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to do that same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one thing that gets me. When you get to a tree, you think about the leaves that it has. Mm -hmm. We know that in the fall, the leaves fall off, mm -hmm. but in the spring and summer, they come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. I wanted to add to that what the mm -hmm. question you're saying. How yeah. do if you are in that family, mm -hmm. how do you break away? And I think the one of the things is or two things is to identify and challenge your limiting beliefs. Yes. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to challenge those things. You have first you gotta identify it. Mm -hmm. And how right. do you identify something if you're not taking the time to get to know yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're not taking that time to understand who you are, you won't know that there's a difference and that there's a need for you to break off. Mm -hmm. right. And then if you're struggling, you know, with trying to figure that out on your own, that's what professional help is for. This is. Mm -hmm. Seek professional come on, counsel, come on, come on. you know, for them to help you. I know it's all to talk to your girlfriends mm -hmm. and your guy friends. And my mama told me and my sister told me, but if they are not where you want to be, 
-hmm. or at least at a level where you're trying to get to, mm -hmm. they might not be the ones that you need to talk to Absolutely. that can wow. get you to that next step mm -hmm. for you to even I to to even identify that there is a limiting belief because they believe what you believe right now. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Right. So how can they help you branch out? If y'all think the same. Right. Wow. Like, that they, is they good. Won't. Exactly. Right, right, They right. won't because they're going to only take you as far as they, they can. Right? Right. right. I just want you to know definitions. Limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a point or, or level beyond which some something does not or may not extend or pass. Mm. The furthest extent of one's physical or mental endurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a limit. That's mm -hmm. a limit. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it's only can go so far. But this my point is that we are limitless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There is no we serve a limitless God. Right. We <laughs> are limitless. So the mm -hmm. amount of fruit that we can bear mm -hmm. is limitless. Mm -hmm. this, so basically it's our mindset. Mm -hmm. We have to renew our mind. We have right. to get it in our mind because then if we think it, then we'll believe it. Hmm. Yeah, about that cognitive behavior. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you said, Larisha, at one point, take the mask off. I'm saying, take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take yeah. the limits yeah. off. Yeah. Yes, and yes. Right. Off. That's true. Exactly. Hmm. Increase all the right. Thank right. you, Israel. Yes. 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 If you would like to, yes. don't play. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, this is, this is my, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to share. This is my motto right now. Mm -hmm. um, go where you've never been before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go where you've never been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. think about if I'm limitless mm -hmm. and I'm a branch that can bear as endless amount of fruit, guess where I'm going to go? Yeah. Guess what I can do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Limitless. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. that is good. Y'all helping mm -hmm. me today. Listen, <laughs> if, even if we are not, if the people don't feel help, we helping each other. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. I know. Yeah. Do you have? Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just going to say, you said endless amount of fruit. Yeah. But that comes with the pruning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you do the individual work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. growth. Movement from stagnation occurs, yeah. yes. and you're able to produce those things that are positive and uplifting. Right. Yeah. Those things that's going to take you beyond the limit, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need the pruning. Yeah, that's yeah, true. true. That's true. true. When you say pruning, like what? How would we explain that to people when we we talk about pruning? Um, what does that mean? I take it back to something that you shared. Um, we got to confront. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, confront those thoughts, confront those core beliefs, confront ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If we're not confronting, yeah, it's not just about oh. cutting off. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's true. Confronting. It has to be some work that we have to do, and that's the thing. We but but the beliefs and the limitless. I was sitting up thinking about. It. Of course, I can't help the scriptures in me. Um, and I've been thinking about this actually for probably for about the past few shows that we've done, but um. The thing is, we hope, we wish, we daydream. You know, they taught us when we were kids in school, you read a book, it can take you anywhere. We can dream all day, but if we don't do the work. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about therapy. Yes. When you do therapy and you have an amazing therapist and we have amazing therapists out there, oh, it yeah. is a limitless mm -hmm. yeah. amount of therapists. Yeah. And if I could just interject this just real quick, you know, a little side note. It used to be, if we look, especially in the United States of America, when it came to therapy and around the world, that the ones who were therapists, nine times out of 10, the population were white male. And then you had some white female that were in there. Now it's a limitless amount. Yes. Yeah. No matter what you believe, what you don't believe, what you think, I want to, I want a male therapist. A lot of males I hear will not go to therapy because they say, well, I want a male therapist because he won't judge me. But then some of them say, well, I want a female, especially right. in marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want a man because then he going to judge me. Well, let me get a female. So right. there is a limitless amount. But I say all that to say faith without works is dead. Ooh. You can yeah. have faith all day. You can believe, you can daydream, you can act like you're an NBA player and a player all this kind of stuff but if you don't do the work because the work is going to produce the fruit yeah. it is going to produce the change yeah. you see what I'm saying and so as we're talking about the family there is a lot of excuses that we tell ourselves I did that before I went to therapy mm -hmm. that's all I can talk about it oh I'm not going 
first thing, this is what we must. I'm not crazy. I'm not going to therapy. Yeah. That, I told my first therapist that. Why are you here today? I don't know because I'm not crazy. That's just what I said. And she started laughing. So please let that not be an excuse yeah. to limit yourself from blossoming. Because with the branch, when you start to blossom on your branch, your, hu your, your husband, your wife start to blossom, your children start to blossom, it becomes a new normal. So you no longer have to be like the tree. Right. Mm -hmm. I like what you said when you um taking that limit off and saying, well, I'm not going to go to therapy because I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that you need that necessary help. I, I want to just speak to those who are out there in a professional level, especially who share the same profession as we do right. as therapists, because I can remember when I first started going to therapy because I'm skilled, I'm trained, I know all of the things I, I went in there like. Don't do X, Y, Z. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't come at me with this. If you don't have anything new, then you can't help me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give this person an opportunity mm -hmm. to even try to help me. And what I think I did is created an intimidation into, in her. Mm -hmm. So as therapists mm -hmm. who are out there who still need help because we still need help. Mm -hmm. I have my therapist now. She is amazing. Right. Let me right. tell you, she's amazing. I ain't going to give y'all her name because I don't want y'all to take her. <laughs> <laughs> but she is amazing. But when I, I had to stop myself and open myself up to say, Nikki, somebody can help you mm -hmm. just because That's you good. are skilled, you are trained. Does it mean that they cannot take that same skill and training and help you and help you in a different way? I had to be open to receive that. Mm -hmm. And so that I'm part. saying that to those who are out there and even those who are in higher positions, maybe you're a CEO, maybe you are, um, you own a whole, I mean, company, a billion dollar company. I don't care if you feel like you hold this high level of pastors, bishops, all of y'all. I'm talking yeah. to everybody. everybody. Just because you hold a title, a high title, doesn't mean that you know everything and that you can get yourself through every situation that you've been presented with. And maybe you don't even understand how to separate yourself from your tree. Seek help. Yes. There is somebody who can help you. Mm -hmm. There is somebody out there who has a word for you. Mm -hmm. There is somebody out there who has something that they can give to you and that if you are open enough to receive it, you'll receive it. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I think uh, people have to realize that uh, trees, plants that produce things that have to be fertilized. Mm -hmm. That's what we do as counselors. We help cultivate. We help individuals solve issues. Uh, but in order to do that, you got to step out on faith and allow individuals to determine the root of what problems you may be having and then try to go from there. Mm -hmm. And I'll say something that uh, one of our old pastors used to say that really helped me out a lot, uh, even going into the counseling profession. In order to have something that you never had, you have to do something that you've never done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the only thing we're saying is this. Therapy is a business. People have to make money to live, pay bills, things of that nature. But I will tell you, the four that are sitting here, the five that are sitting here, we don't do it for the money. Uh -huh. We do it because we generally yes. care about people and we want to see people grow. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. when you are passionate about people, it doesn't matter what problem you have doesn't matter what situation you're going through, you're going to get the same amount of effort regardless of the fact because we want to see people go through things and then get through it. Mm -hmm. um, I used to ask people this question all the time. It's kind of like a riddle. So how far can a dog run into the woods? Can he run part of the way, half the way, or all the way? And the answer is he can only run half the way because once he gets to the halfway point, then he starts to run out of the woods. So in your situation, in your circumstances that you're going through, we need you to start running. And we need you to get to that halfway point because once you get there, now you're coming out the other side and therapy can help you come out of your situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good, good. So I've been having a question ever since you you um, referenced the scripture earlier. And it's actually, you know, I'm going to soak up all oh, the fact we got a male yeah. counselor, you know, in here not to take anything from us, but. One of the biggest things that I hear in the relational field, um, not necessarily with the my niche of generational trauma and breaking that, but it kind of soaks into, mm -hmm. is the leave and cleave. 
the leave and cleave. There are um, a lot of individuals, let me say friends, it's not necessarily, you know, in the council room, but because I don't counsel my friends, but there are friends that we've had conversation with over the year and the leave and cleave is the peace. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it could be the wife that, well, my daddy used to do this. My daddy did that. And, you know, my daddy, my daddy. But you're not married to your daddy. There you go. But and then it could be the 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 male, and where it's most common commonly seen is because he was raised to be the son husband. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait until we do that show. <laughs> but he was raised to be the son husband to where he don't know how to properly leave and cleave. You still over here on this branch on this side of the tree, but you didn't marry. You then confessed and said your vows before God. And then you're over here because you have your mother who's used to the son husband. The wife can't be a wife. You two can't come together like you're supposed to, how God desired for you to come together. And so he's struggling. So well, I ain't going to say nothing to my mama. But as my wife, I'm going to tell you, you just going to have to deal with it. Mama comes first. What would you say, sir, as a male, a male therapist and a male that's married? Well, it's, 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 oh God. I'm going to tell you. I'm like, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to tell you like, um, one of my professors told me, he asked me, he said, Kenya, how do you like to do therapy? And I said, uh, it all depends on who I'm seeing and what they're going through. He said, okay, so let me ask you a question. You like to hunt, right? I said, yeah. He said, so do you stalk or you go out and track the animal using track, look at the droppings, uh, follow broken branches and things of that nature, or do you climb up a tree and wait for it to come? And I said, well, I really like to st uh, stalk. And he said, then you got to quit playing around mm -hmm. and jump right in there mm -hmm. with your clients. You're trying to warm them up and do all this stuff. And sometimes when it comes to those individuals that don't want to leave and cleave right, you got to jump right in there and let them know. But it's like you said, you're not married to your mom. Mm -hmm. You're married to your wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that is where their situation is at, that you're having problems in your marriage, then your mom is not going to fix it. It's going to take you and that wife to be mm -hmm. able to, to fix that. So that would be some of the things I, I would tell individuals in that part. The other part we have to understand, there's a reason you leave and cleave. Okay. Okay. And when you're leaving, hopefully your parents have done everything that they're supposed to do. As you were talking about earlier, you taught them how to change the tire before they have a flat. Right. So that way, when you have a wife, you guys know how to navigate life. One of the issues that I see right now with a lot of individuals is that they haven't been taught how to change the tires in their relationships. Mm -hmm. They're running on flats. Mm -hmm. They don't know where the next uh, pump station is mm -hmm. at. And the, this therapy circle, not only here, but all over uh, the world where you have a lot of trained therapists, they know how to get your tire pumped back up. Mm. But you got to be willing to get the vehicle to the pump station. Mm. you got to get it there. And so leaving in Cleveland, once again, in order for you to be able to produce fruit, that seed can't stay in the package the whole time. Somebody got to plant it. You got to plant your relationship, let it grow, nurture it, because you're only going to have that relationship. If it doesn't go uh, right for you and it ends in divorce or something of that nature, you don't see mom and dad sitting there talking about um, your tea. That's on you now. They ain't paying that child support. Right. They're, they're not dealing with you when you're in your lowest of low. There you go. That's you your go. relationship. Oh, now it is. Now it is. <laughs> so. I'll just say it like this, recognize who you're married to. Oh, mm. And, you know, I, I want to add something to that. Um, when we talk about leaving and cleaving, when you ha when you are married, it should only be three individuals or yeah. three people in that marriage. That's your spouse and God. That broke mm -hmm. that, 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 that three, mm -hmm. three, three four, four strings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not that, and not easily broken. Yes. I can remember, too, um, my pastor and my old pastor, um, Pastor Patricia, well, I tell you, I gleaned so much from her. <laughs> <laughs> I have gleaned so much from her, but I was sitting in the off in her office um, one day. It was some years ago, and she, I don't even know how we got on the subject of marriage, but we were talking about marriage, and she drew a triangle, and she she put me and my husband at the bottom, mm -hmm. and God was at the top, and she was like, as long as you all are connected to God, you will always be connected down here. Mm -hmm. And so it just made so much sense to me that even if there is that connection between me and my husband, mm -hmm. as long as we're connected to God and he is, we can come back together mm -hmm. and mend that. And so it, that just meant so much to me. And I always think about that whenever I have trials or tribulations or whatever in my marriage, or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just want to, you know, 
it's it's a podcast or a YouTube channel I use listen to too. Marriage be hard. Mm-hmm. Yes, marriage be hard sometimes. <laughs> so when that time comes, I think of that and I think of that three strand cord. As long as we keep God in the middle of it, then we can come together in a healthy manner so that I can or He can't properly leave and cleave. Yeah, we can properly be together. That's so. a good point. And, right. and I would tell individuals this when it comes to therapy. If you're having issues producing fruit, uh, this is one thing I'll, t- I'll tell you from from experience with my wife and I. We were branches fighting each other. Uh-huh. I don't ever see any trees growing up out of the ground and branches are fighting. Just swing. Just I mean, swing. we went literally swing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the things that I've seen when it comes to marriage therapy is that the husband and the wife are so busy fighting each other. Instead of coming together on one accord, talking things out, communicating, uh, being able to uh, give authority plus get authority and and share things within the relationship, they fight each other so much they can't even fix the relationship. Mm. They'll let everything outside of the relationship influence their relationship instead of just sitting down and saying, you know what? We are together. We're trying to produce fruit. What do we need to do in order to make this fruit grow? Mm-hmm. And I will tell you, we sat back, we prayed long and hard. And when we made up our minds that we were going to quit fighting each other and keep everybody else out of our relationship and work on us, right. everything at that point started to get better. Mm-hmm. And so it's not the fact that we cut off from our family. We didn't cut off. We took a step back. Mm-hmm. We were still joined with them. We still do things with our family, but we have grown and prospered over the years because we had to recognize what was our calling. And the calling of the branch is to produce fruit. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's a lemon, doesn't matter if it's a pine cone or a walnut. That is what the branch's job is to do, is to produce fruit. The calling of the branch for me. I got to write that down. Like this is the truth. No, the calling of the branch produces fruit. This is what I have. I have a question for Larissa. Like when you think about the family dynamics, and you talked about the the wife and the husband. What what would it look like between a mother and a and a um and her children or the child and her father where there is um the branches are broken like how how do they begin to even though now the the um person is now a branch she's an individual he's an individual how do what would it look like for them to repair mm-hmm. when there is toxicity in the roots mm-hmm. right so how do they begin mm-hmm. to repair well i mean definitely looking at the environment Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So if the toxicity is still there, we got to get to the root. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? What's at the root? Mm-hmm. You know, is it unforgiveness? Is it abuse? Is it gaslighting? Is it, but you got to really get to the root. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the root work look like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Them four horsemen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, if I could just self-disclose right now, <laughs> right? Um, so growing up, um, I experienced difficulties with my mother, mm-hmm. right? Shifting into parenthood, right? And having and raising um, my daughter and my sons, I didn't want to carry that. Mm-hmm. Right, that same toxicity, that same pain, that same hurt, those patterns, right, mm-hmm. um, that were unproductive, and so it really is about taking a look at the environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That you're in and shifting. Mm-hmm. You know, if I could give an analogy, mm-hmm. go ahead. Um, have y'all ever had strep throat before? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So usually when you have strep throat, there's the the burning, mm-hmm. uh, difficulty eating. Mm-hmm. There there's there's the pain that comes with it, maybe fever or, or what have you, because there's something that's off, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. right? But you get your antibiotics, you go to the doctor, they you know give you a diagnosis or what have you, but there are other things that you got to do. You got to change your toothbrush. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's 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 a, you you, you got to change your toothbrush. Mm. You know what I mean? You may have to change a towel or a washcloth mm. or, or what have you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not spreading. Yeah, mm. that's kind of thing. Right. But the environment, 
Yeah. It's really key. But getting to that root, doing that root work. Mm-hmm. That's, so good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like it can be repaired? Like mm-hmm. after, so let's say you did your root mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. you did the work, but mm-hmm. let's say your mom didn't. Mm-hmm. Does that now mean that you just go in and, and everything is just great now? Mm-mm. So what does that look like? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, being honest, I'm just saying, there's still some triggers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's still some things that's like ripping the band-aid off mm-hmm. all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't uh, affect change or impact anyone else outside but of you. Thank you. Yeah. Of yeah. of thank you. Yeah. So thank you. if I'm willing to do the work, if I'm willing to willing to dig deep and willing to, you know what I mean, pull that stuff out, uproot it, plug mm-hmm. it up, till it, move it out, mm-hmm. you know, then you know that growth is gonna happen. So healing is definitely possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But you gotta want it. Yeah. Mm. I think I heard one lady say some time ago, I'm not going to fight you for your healing. Mm. Right? Mm. So if you don't want to heal, you nice. know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to do the root work. Okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to I'm gonna go over here in this space and this mm-hmm. environment mm. and do what needs to be done. So I'm not carrying that. Mm. So it yeah. sounds like what we said cutting from mm-hmm. the branch in a healthy way and mm-hmm. planting yourself so that mm-hmm. you can grow and produce mm-hmm. fruit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good fruit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, lasting fruit. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, one thing that um, I, I know also that I recognize that a lot of people wrestle with when it comes to the, the tree, the family tree, um, is that even though you are grown, mm-hmm. you're a whole grown adult, you have those who are you know, elder than you in the family Mm -hmm. who look at you like you're still a child. Mm -hmm. They talk to you like you're still a child, even in the presence of your own family, (laughs) that you, your family of creation that you have, they see you as a Mm five-year-old. So that's a lot of struggle that I see a lot of people dealing Mm -hmm. with now where Maybe, you know, like you said, you've done, a th- you identified because, mm-hmm. oh, what was your saying? Your, how, oh, you said it on another show about how you had to recognize. Oh, look, I'm look, just like. You got to look at notes and stuff. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> let me go back to the old notes. Yeah. But you were saying something about how basically you can't heal from oh, something. So you, you cannot heal from what you will not confront. <laughs> Yes. yes, and we say heal and, and deliver. deliver. Uh-huh. You yes, cannot you, be healed or delivered. You cannot heal and be delivered from what you are not willing to confront. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, families nowadays are not willing to number one have a mature conversation, mm-hmm. but identify what is the root. What is the root cause? Because we're so used to pretending like nothing is wrong. We're so used to just getting together and faking and taking that family picture. And this is my cousin, you know, and all that. But you ain't talked to cousin in 10 years because maybe both of us are mothers and then got into it and they don't talk to each other and stuff. And so I say it like this. Families are so used to being a faux tree. Come on, Come on they used to be in a faux tree. For those who do not do not know what faux f a u x mean, that's fake. Mm-hmm. So it used to be in a fake tree and operating in a fake manner, and you wonder why it is that the family's so stagnant and it don't grow and produce much fruit. But I know you have something because yeah, your I, pen is going. No, there. I, I was listening to what you were saying that, and I've seen that a lot with families that do that with adult grown children. Mm. And the easiest thing I, I can say is that they can't realize when fruit is ripe. Mm. Mm. They can't realize when it's ripe. They still treat that fruit like it just sprung out, like the bugs still have to be taken care of it, like it's not ready to be picked when really you have grown and you have the juice, if you will, you have the color that is there for you to be fruitful for some other purpose but they're still holding on you because they need you for their purpose. Oh, and maybe no. they do it because they don't grow either. Yeah. I, I wanted to, to say, you can say, how do you handle, how do you deal with when you have adults in your family that is still treating you like, like a kid? Like a kid. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing that comes to me, the word boundaries. Yeah. Mm. Set boundaries. Mm-hmm. So if you're healed, 
Like Marisha said, she's mm-hmm. gone through her healing process. She knows who she is yeah. at this point. You know mm-hmm. who you are. So now it comes to if I'm going to engage or interact with my family, because I'm, I'm not totally trying to cut off from them. Mm-hmm. But now when I come back to you, mm-hmm. I have boundaries in yes. place. Wow. You can't cross those boundaries. Mm-hmm. I have things in, in place to protect me. Wow. So no longer will you be able to talk to me as if I'm a child because my boundary is going to stop it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's what I love about therapy. And not just the fact because we are therapists, but I love the fact that therapy, once you have done that root work mm-hmm. and dug up the root, once you have identified, <laughs> then did the root work, you know what I'm saying? Dug up the root, you've healed, you've de- been delivered mm-hmm. from a lot of things. I like how as therapists and, and in counseling, you know, a therapist will sit with you and teach you how to create healthy boundaries, Mm -hmm. healthy boundaries, because a lot of us who don't truly understand boundaries, we think, oh yeah, that's not right. I shouldn't treat you fall back into the old ways in your mind. So you technically kind of fighting yourself internally. Mm -hmm. It's an eternal um, battle within yourself, but healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. You can say, no, mm-hmm. look, okay. I'm going to use him as an example because we are married. You know, I've been to counseling and let's say he's still on the fence about it. Uh-uh. I don't like when you raise your voice at me like that. And the reason why, because see that identified, the reason why I don't like it is because you raise your voice for me. It reminds me of my childhood when my parents used to fight and argue and that was traumatizing. So I'm going to ask you as my husband, please don't raise your voice at me. Choose and walk off. Mm-hmm. Calm down, do what you need to do before you come back and have this conversation. Okay. You know, so that's growth because the inner, inner, um, I'm going to say in a thug because I'm not a thug, I'm a lady. But <laughs> the, 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 the person who I was would raise my voice. I'm cussing. I'm trying to fight you. We're breaking furniture. Yeah, I'm going to say not what you're not going to do. Address me like that. Right, mm-hmm. right. And that's, that's just not the way to, to handle situations like that. The one mm-hmm. thing that I, I um, do, what you said, you have to, you have to become aware of those things. So kind of doing that work. The one thing that I take the process that I take my clients through is awareness, Mm -hmm. address, process, and implement change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't go through that, then what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Wasting time. On right wheel. On right 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 wheel. So a lot of times people can be aware Mm -hmm. and definitely be aware Mm -hmm. and know that they are behaving in such a manner and decide not to change. Mm -hmm. They decide that that's how they're going to be. And and people, let me just say this to (laughs) y'all. Just because you older don't mean you stuck in your ways. Mm. You're choosing yes. your ways. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. You're not stuck. You're, you're choosing, choosing to stay stuck. Yeah, yeah, you're choosing to stay stuck. Mm-hmm. Except for the people in the back. <laughs> for the people in the back. For the people in the back. You are not stuck. Mm-hmm. You're choosing to be stuck. Mm-hmm. You can make a choice to to be to be healed, to be free, yeah. to be just. Yeah, you, yeah, you can be free. Delivered. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Rachel. Mm-hmm. You can be free. You can be delivered from that. And so when people say, "I," that's just how I am, or they say, that's just how they are. Right. No, it's no. A it's a choice. Right. It's definitely a choice. So stop taking that on as if it's a badge of honor to say, that's just how I am, or that's just how they are. You gotta no. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, and that's the thing. When people set boundaries and they start cutting you off and isolating themselves or stepping away from you, they made a choice to choose themselves and to protect themselves. That was a boundary. Mm-hmm. And so you can't be mad when people choose themselves. Yeah. So understand yes. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You took all my notes. <laughs> 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 No, like, about it. Hey, great minds, great minds think alike. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. We, we are, we here, we here, we here. But yeah, I mean, you just said everything I wrote down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you know, the boundaries piece is showing love to yourself yes. and to others. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're showing them how to treat you and you're honoring you. That's so important, right? Yes. Like in this individuality of being a branch, you have to honor yourself, mm-hmm. and love yourself, and care for yourself. You have to nourish yourself mm-hmm. and you cannot expect somebody else to do it right? yes oh, yes so boundaries with love is it goes both ways for them Absolutely. and for you right Absolutely. it's interesting it makes me think about from a, a relational standpoint that is tough what you just said that is such a huge me- um now what you just said 
That is such a, a huge thing that I think people wrestle with, mm. especially in relationship, yes. period. But I'll start with relationship, then I'll go back to husband and wife dynamic. It's in relationship where well, you're my friend. I don't know what I want. I haven't done no work on myself. I don't have any healing, but you're supposed to know what I want. And you're not treating me the way that I feel that you should be treating me. And it's I don't the even know how I'm supposed to be treated. Facts. And then there's just like the same when it comes to family. You know what I'm saying? You uh because this is something that I had to self-disclosure, like that I had to work on with myself. I am just naturally one. I'm if, especially if God puts someone on my heart, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna text some of you and all that kind of stuff. And then I was sitting up kind of big mad at God, like this is what you put in me. This is it. why people ain't calling and checking and done it on me. God, I want that too. Yeah. So let me talk to the poorers for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you always pouring into, raise your hand if you use poor, use more, you always pouring into everyone else <laughs> and you are neglecting self yeah. called self neglect. Mm -hmm. And so that happens in the family dynamic, but it also happened in the marital relationship mm -hmm. because me and him been married almost 25 years and it would be foolish of me as his wife to say, I've been married to you for 25 years. You should know how I feel, think what I want and blah, blah, blah. No. Right. And let me tell you why. Cause we grow. Yeah. Yes. We all grow. We're not right. five year olds sitting up here speaking to you all. No, we are grown individuals. And if I learn nothing else from the wisdom of an elder who is now an ancestor, amazing woman who was married for over 50 plus years, she said, baby, every day you are going to learn something new about your spouse. All the way up into the end, you are going to learn something new. So we get stagnant. We don't grow. Our marriage is dead. Our relationship with our family is dead. Our friendships with our girlfriends or we're cutting women off because I can't deal with them. They used to be me is dead. So if everything around you is dead. <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't look directly at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> if everything around you is dead, it can't be everything that's around you. It has to be you. Ooh. That is spreading death and disease to everyone that is around you. Ouch. And in order for you to get a healing, you are going to need to renew your mind. And that's going to happen in therapy. Yep. And I say this everywhere I go and I'm going to get out my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it. Y'all have a problem. I'm going to say it with me. Baby, that tooth get to hurting and you can't eat. Where are you going? To the yes. dentist. Don't let you hit that pinky toe and you think it's broke. And I know y'all done thought of some of the imaginary words, some special words you <laughs> said, or your back goes out. Any type of pain, baby, you are worried like yesterday. Mm -hmm. So why is it when it comes to your mental health, your mind, your head, what controls your whole body, your computer, this is your central processing unit. Yes. And there are, because it was said in the last show, and let me talk to the saints yet again, in case y'all was not on the last show. I don't need to go to a counselor because I got the ultimate counselor. He was a counselor who made counselors. What are we talking about here? But you don't say that when you go to the doctor. When that heart, when you got, you feeling like you having a stroke, baby, you call it 911 or pressing your little, I ain't trying to laugh, but that was a funny commercial growing up. What was that? Help, I fall and I can't yeah. get up. Uh, med alert. Come yeah. on, med alert. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They handy, they handy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm on that for a minute, but it really bothers me as a professional, as a clinician. And I'm sure you all feel the same way out there when people try to minimize us, like God did not create us to do this work yeah. because truth be told Shan was fine I wasn't trying to go to no was anybody trying to go was that your you wanted to go no, let, let me tell you I was trying to become a teacher oh and then I tried to escape it even after having a license I tried to become a nurse y'all wow <laughs> You was running, huh, I was Jonah? Running, Jonah X. <laughs> Listen, I went and even took the entrance exam to get into nursing school, and I missed it by only a few points. Never ever having any medical background, and I was like, "Girl, why didn't let me get that close?" And you didn't let me get it. Mm -hmm. Like I was literally getting ready to go after that thing as a nurse, and I had somebody tell me. Girl, I come from a long line of nurses, and you are not a nurse, and you are a therapist. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> just, just shut it down right there, honey. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. But yes. yes, so it's okay. Give yourself permission is all I'm saying to get the help and the healing that you need. So that way you don't um, infect your family of creation. Because one of the things I was sharing with them before we came on and we was really, you know, getting into this thing is that one thing that I noticed in my field with relational and generational um, trauma with that being the focus is that there are too many who will ruin their family of creation Mm -hmm. because you're still trying to be attached to your family of origin. Mm -hmm. So can we break that down for them real quick of what you mean by family of creation versus family of origin? Mm -hmm. Family of creation is you creating your family. You get me and my husband got married. We had children. That's our family of creation. Our family of origin is who we came from, where we came from, our mother, father, sister, brother, whatever the case may be. So once you get married, that's your extended family. You know, your mom and your daddy, you know, they're still there. But your family of creation who you are building with, yeah. who are you responsible for when you have children and things like that. Yeah. We will abandon the children. We'll abandon the spouse and everything because I'm still the little kid in me. I'm on somebody. Ooh, that reminds little, me of the show, I'm Prison. Oh, I'm Prison. Yes. The little child in me is still it. trying to get yeah. acceptance from my family of Ooh, it's a where child. I came from. Yeah. But, but anyhow, anyhow, child. Yeah, child. That's the inner child. That, that should definitely be a topic. Yes. Let me oh, write it down. The yes. inner child. The yes. inner child. So, y'all, this has been a great, great, great session, a great talk. I am so thrilled about everything that was disclosed here, all the things, the tools, the, the skills, the just the things that we put out there for people to listen mm-hmm. or to look out for in their family um, in dealing with being the branch and not the tree. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are going to close it out um, here. And so I just want to... Leave y'all with something, because we we try to leave y'all with something, to give you a little bit of something, just to help you out. And I would say the one thing that really stuck out to me, that something coming from an individual um, perspective and identity, is to identify who you are. Mm. Get that, 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 um, you define yourself. Let me just say that. You get to define who you are and how you show up. Mm -hmm. Just because you're connected to someone doesn't mean you have to become them. Mm -hmm. You get to become yourself. Um, And then understanding that when you become that person, that you don't have to be stagnant or stuck, that you can continue to grow. I always um, talk about ever evolving. We're always evolving, meaning that we're always growing. You should always be growing. And so we just thank y'all for tuning in um, with us, listening to us. Um, We ask that if you have any topics, any things, any questions that you all want to ask of us, leave them down in the comments. Um, Like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell um, so that you will know when we are posting our next video. And we look to see, um, look forward to seeing you on our next show at Talk Therapy and Heal. Bye. Bye. Bye.